Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junk and Whiff Jr. A little maintenance project today, 2006 Chevy Colorado 4Banger. So the truck's got a weird little stumble to it occasionally, and I'm not quite sure what it is. It doesn't actually throw a check engine light code, so we can't scan it and check anything like that. But we're going to start with the basics. The truck's right at 100,000 miles now. Uh, I did throw some fuel treatment in there for a couple of tanks just to see if anything would happen. And I didn't really notice any difference at all. So it's time to take a little more drastic measures. And we're going to dive into it a little bit, not too far. Going to do some new spark plugs and ignition coils. So these are direct coil and plug on this truck. So uh, I don't know if they're going to be... Uh, Obviously, they're good if the truck's running and uh, not missing all the time, but I'm wondering if there's a boot situation going on, so I got us, whoops, don't mind those spark plugs that just hit the deck. Good thing they come in a nice package so you don't have to worry about that stuff getting tore up. Anywho, NGK Laser Platinum Spark Plugs here we're going to go with, and went with B&B &B, uh, Ignition Coils because they were relatively affordable uh, and not knowing that this is my problem 100%. I know it's dumb to throw parts at stuff, but this is kind of what we're doing. 100,000 miles. My uh, curiosity is if on the bottom of those boots, because uh, they're down in the hole on these late model cylinder heads, if there's uh, starting to be a crack or a carbon trail on one of those and occasionally it's just, uh, you know, ground and shorten out and not sending the fire to the plug like it should. So we're going to find out. As far as I can tell, we got to get this air cleaner, uh, you know, muffler induction system off of here. This actually makes it quite a bit uh, quieter. Back in the day, I had one of these trucks and I put the uh, famous cold air intake on it. And it just goes from the throttle body over here to a cone filter. And when you get rid of this, it gets really loud. It's like a really sucky, um, you know, makes you think you're going fast kind of sound, but you're really not going anywhere. So I'm going to get this stuff out of the way, see if we can stare at those coils and plugs. So the first tool we're going to start with is the old uh, 5 16 on a nut driver. Bust these hose clamps loose. We can get this tube out of the way. Then we're going to take the clamp loose on the throttle body coupler and see if we get lucky and all this stuff just, you know, pops off there like it's supposed to. But I know how projects go for me, so we shall find out. Throw that over there for future reference. Okay. Somewhere back here, there she is. That one loosened up. I don't know if there's any bolts. Yep, there it is right there. Okay, so we got a couple of 10 millimetric bolts over here. Let me grab a socket and we'll get those out. That thing feels loose. There it is. Oh, and we got a PCV style valve cover hose attached back here. Let's see if we can pull that off. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Nice and greasy. Just the way we like it. All right, so now that that's out of the way, we are staring directly at our four ignition coils there. I am gonna go ahead and pull this coupler off here to make it easier to get those two ones out. It's a necessity. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so the coils have these little clips that you have to slide up and then squeeze the little tab and then they pop off. So just pull up on the gray plastic. Come on. There it goes. Good thing about working on this modern stuff is the only thing you got to keep straight is the coil wires but the way this harness is laid out you'd have to be a real goofball to screw that up because it stays right in place it's not like you're working on the old stuff where you got to remember the firing order and not uh crisscross any wires so okay one two three and four coil bolts Start with the back one. You gotta reach the furthest for it. Wow, so that lifted right off. There was zero resistance on this spark plug boot at all, uh, which is interesting because usually they have some sort of, you know, snug fit on the spark plug, but I don't see any signs of any carbon tracks or anything like that. I am gonna go ahead and replace them while we're doing it. I'm all right, regular old 5 8 spark plug socket on a ratchet here. So as I was thinking about this, 
Also makes me wonder uh, if we do have just a spark plug issue going on since the coils do look so good. So I think uh, best thing to do is let's get all our spark plugs out, take a good stare at them, see if there's anything interesting going on or if one's in a little worse shape than another. Hmm. Go ahead and focus. Gotta tell you, that thing's looking pretty decent. Looks a little healthy on the gap for me. And uh, whoever did this before, it's definitely not any sort of a, you know, platinum or iridium tip. That's just a standard old cheap spark plug there. So maybe just upgrading these plugs will get us dialed in. So I figured I'd check it with the old spark plug uh, gap checking tool there. And we're at 55 thousandths gap on that spark plug. So that's definitely a pretty good sign of a wear, of wear on the electrode. Uh, so, you know, preventative maintenance here, uh, regular maintenance, whatever you want to call it, definitely need to be changed out. So let's get the other three out and see what we're in for. Well, there's nothing obvious here going on with these spark plugs. They all look pretty similar. One of them does have about a 58 thousandths gap instead of a 55. So uh, I wouldn't consider that to be abnormal. That's close enough that it doesn't concern me. So let's move on with this basic tune-up situation. Get these NGKs uh, a little bit of anti-seize on them. I just like that old school habit. We never have to worry about them sticking. Get them screwed in there and throw some new coils on. Okay, so we're almost ready to put our plugs and coils back in this truck. Uh, for those who care, the spark plugs we're using are NGK Laser Platinum PTR5A-13, also known as stock number 2467. If you go into a parts store, the 2467 stock number is the number that they go by. B&B coils, we've got the BB-2303. Now, they actually are made in USA technically because they're made in Puerto Rico, um, not the uh, great 48 states, but hey, they're still USA, so we'll take it. So one thing uh, that I was a little skeptical on is putting these new coils on um, because there's no red flags of anything going on or going wrong with the original ones, I should say, from GM. They came in the truck. But one thing I did notice, and I mentioned it when I pulled them off of the spark plugs, this is the new spark plug, but the spark plug simply drops down into that rubber boot. Now, I don't see any signs of carbon trails, you know, or the spark jumping out through there and burning the boot or anything like that where it can ground to the inside of the cylinder head. But uh, I was a little leery on replacing these, but now it's uh, confirmed that we are doing the right thing because this new coil from B&B, &B, the spark plug just sits on the top. In order for it to go down in there, you have to really push on it. So that rubber is much tighter and the way it fits around the spark plug. So I think we're on the uh, right track here. And once again, I don't know that this is what's wrong with the truck, but as maintenance, 100,000 miles, spark plugs and coils are never going to hurt anyone or anything, so we're doing a good thing here. Let's get some anti-seize on these spark plugs and get them installed in the cylinder head. And I'm very old school. You don't have to do this. Uh, the spark plugs have coatings on them, so this is no longer necessary, but I like to do it. It's cheap insurance. When I do this, I know that that spark plug is not going to stick in the cylinder head in the future, it will unscrew out of there just like the good Lord and NGK intended it to. But a little bit of anti-seize goes a long ways. And uh, if you don't believe me, just use some and you will have that crap everywhere. Okay, last one here and there we go. Good and uh, tight. Heard my torque wrench elbow click, so I know it's good. Coil time. Now, over here to the shelf of good stuff. Dye electric grease. I feel that it's a must. So we are gonna put some inside all of these new, oh geez, let me not get confused here. That's an old one. If you don't believe me, you just have to look at how dirty the top of it is. Confuse yourself. Got too many parts laying around on the demonstrational purposes here. So this spark plug boot, we wanna get it Plenty of dielectric grease in there so that we don't have to worry about this thing shorting out. It will greatly reduce all that and extend the life of all this situation here. So, we can go all the way to the back one here. And it's going to simply, oh yeah, you can feel that spark plug boot stretching out going over the spark plug. So, I really like that compared to the uh, worn out factory ones that came off. And we can pull that off of the connector there. We'll continue that process, and then we'll get these things plugged in. 
Time to plug our coils back in now that they're getting tight. I already got two of them done and just want to give them a nice tug. You will hear, give them a nice push and you'll hear a click. Once you hear that click, then push the gray part back down so you know it's locked. It can't come unplugged, you know, with any heat expansion or road vibrations, anything like that. And those are solid. Now this could be a minor problem as well. It's definitely not helping in any. So this is the half inch diameter hose that goes from the valve cover into that, uh, you know, intake slash muffler assembly. And as I I'd wiped it off and I'm getting ready to put it back on and look at what we've got going on here. Not cracks, but that's just an actual hole. So when you push this on there and it expands out, that hose is wasted. We are going to have to get a new one of these or a piece of hose if we can get it to curve and fit in there right. I'm going to dig around the toolbox and see if I can find something that'll work for us. So as luck would have it, I don't have any of this half inch hose here, but even if I did, I don't know that I could get it to bend like that and actually uh, not kink and be beneficial to us. So for now, I'm just going to reinstall this hose back on there like the factory had it. And I don't think it's the end of the world. Like I say, it doesn't help things. It kind of makes a messy oil leak the way that it is with all those oil vapors, uh, you know, trying to get back into the intake system so it can suck it and burn it out through the engine. But it's remember, it's on the... Uh, front side of the throttle body. So if it were after the throttle body, it would cause a huge vacuum leak, but it's not. It's on the front side, so it's just airflow going through it. So not a big deal. I'm going to reinstall it, and then I'm going to take the VIN number, uh, last eight of the VIN number, call it the Chevy dealership, and see if I can get a replacement one, because I'd much rather have this than trying to have to rig one up, you know, with a regular piece of hose. Uh, but if we have to, that's what we'll do. But if I can get a factory one, that's what we're going to do. All right, snug up our last hose clamp here. Double check. Okay, so we are done. New spark plugs, new coils, dielectric grease, anisees, all the basics you need to get this job done. Got everything plugged back in. Time to take it out for a test drive and see how everything goes. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, it's a small project. Uh, you don't have to go to a shop to have this stuff done. Very basic tools, 10 millimeter socket, 5.8 socket, and a 5.16 socket. And this job's pretty much done. So not a big deal. You can do this stuff yourself. Uh, you can save a lot of money by doing it yourself as well. If you got any questions at the parts stores, they'll generally help you out, uh, you know, with some direction on quality of parts, uh, name brands, and what you may want for your vehicle. And don't be scared to get in there and do it. it it's, it's a basic one. Uh, this is how you get started. Knock out these little ones, then you can move on to bigger stuff on down the road. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Junk with Junior. Hope you enjoyed the little tune-up session. Uh, now you know how to do it. If you got any questions, make sure to comment down below, and I'll help you out best I can, give you a little guidance and assistance. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.